evolution biologist that recognizes that humans have the advantage of proactive minds that can build scenarios of the future and figure out where they want to go. Um, I have always thought that we would use those minds and do that proactive planning. But the older I get, the more I see that humanity is behaving like every other species in nature for the past four billion years of the life of this planet, that they only evolve when they're driven to, when they're really push, uh, pushed into changing by some kind of crisis or disaster. We humans now are facing the biggest climate disaster in our whole human history. It's uh, very exciting to me because I think it is going to be the driver for our evolution. But while humans have weathered at least a dozen ice ages, moving up and down with the ice as it covered more of the earth or less of the earth, not building huge heavy infrastructures, of course, we have survived those ice ages very well. Well, the earth can do either ice ages or hot ages. It doesn't always do ice ages. It does them in spells, and at other times it does hot ages. And the last hot age was 55 million years ago, so humans weren't around to experience that. So here we are with a very unsustainable society, huge heavy infrastructures, 13 of our 20 largest cities in the world right at sea level, and that's all going to get washed away because a hot age means rising ocean levels. And Jim Hansen, the NASA and Columbia University scientist who was muzzled by government people for 30 years, is now finally out there able to talk about what's happening. And uh, he says that when the climate was only one degree centigrade hotter than it is now as an average year-round global temperature, the sea levels were like 60 meters higher. So this can really seriously be a disaster, and it can come on faster than we th like to think it can. So here we are under the crunch, but what do we read about? Climate change, things getting warmer. Oh goody, we can grow bananas in Alaska now. What's the big deal? We humans like creature comforts. We like the idea of being warm. I say we had better talk about the onset of a hot age rather than an ice age because maybe people will sit up and take notice then. But again, uh, you're going to have to have the popcorn effect of more frequent Katrinas and tsunamis and fires and floods, as is happening now, to wake people up. People are being waked up locally where there's uh, fire. Uh, in Santa Barbara this summer, where I live, we had a fire that took six weeks to put out with 2,000 firemen there day and night working on it. These And they were happening in other parts of the country at the same time. So we didn't get bad hurricanes the last two years, but we have gotten really bad fires. And people are dying running marathons in October in Chicago because of the 90 degree heat. Uh, so we're feeling it, and people who live in areas where they depend on uh, snowy mountains for their water supply are seeing less snow cover on the mountains. Um, it's, it's going to happen, it's going to come upon us, and it's going to force us to build a whole new kind of society. To me, crisis is always opportunity in nature. After every great extinction, you find a flowering of new species all at once, not slow Darwinian lineages, but as if nature said, whoops, that wasn't working, let's do something different, and does whole ecosystems at a time, changing the genetics very, very rapidly. So um, it's crisis that will drive us the way it has other species, and the biggest driving that nature does is moving species out of hostile competition into a mature cooperative mode. This is what your body represents. A hundred trillion cells working in concert, every one of those invisibly small cells being larger and more, uh, being more complex than a large human city. It's hard for us to really get how complex the micro world is because scientists can only now really look into those cells and see that one cell in your body has 30,000 recycling centers in it 
just to keep all the molecules healthy. 30,000 recycling centers that are so high tech that when a damaged protein gets pulled into this center, this tunnel, and all the parts of it, the amino acids are taken apart, and a new molecule is woven out of those parts and spit out the other side of the recycling center. Now this is kind of as if you took a sick tree and stuck it in a chipper machine and got a new tree out the other end. So let me tell you that your body is more high tech than any machinery we have yet invented, any technology that we've invented. And yet, why isn't this in the newspapers? When this was broadcast to the public through Scientific American, it was called Chambers of Doom. The language was, molecules are pulled into these centers like prisoners stretched on a rack and dealt the death of a thousand knives. Instead of saying, we have recycling centers that can make new molecules out of old sick ones, right? This should have been really exciting news to make people say, wow, is my body great? I should be able to keep myself healthy with 30,000 recycling centers and every one of my cells renewing my proteins. Why would I need a doctor, right? We don't trust our bodies. We are taught to trust only authorities. We're kept like little children, not doing research ourselves. But the internet is changing that and people are putting their own symptoms in and they're getting diagnoses and they're doing without the doctors and they're going to health food stores and they're finding ways to cure themselves. Fortunately, you see, life is resilient. And when you get a healthcare system that's doing so much damage that you kind of wonder whether it's doing anywhere near as much good as it's doing damage, uh, and in cahoots with a food business that throws junk food at people, then life is resilient. It starts protecting itself. People start taking matters into their own hands. And that's the evolution that we're seeing in the world now, that we're getting alternative education and alternative health care and all these things bubbling up from below regardless of how unsustainable the big economy is. What will happen when the uh, longevity statistics plunge, which I believe they are doing, and young people find out that their life expectancy is 50 rather than 80? Um, will that do it? I don't know. What does it take to wake up a culture? Uh, they'll know that grandparents lived to older age. They'll start to question it, I would assume. Anyway, I think the world is going to be quite busy in dealing with environmental problems, uh, ecosystem problems due to natural disasters such as flyer, fire and flood and famine and hurricanes and tsunamis and all of those things. And that in the process of working together to cope with those things, just as we saw after Katrina, people's hearts opened up, they went and volunteered, they helped each other. People will help each other. People will build community. So um, I'm afraid I'm in a position where I'm egging Mother Nature on and saying, bring on this hot age, because I see that we need to be pushed into better behavior. And I welcome that. I look at all systems holistically as holarchies rather than hierarchies. We all know what a hierarchy is. A holarchy in my body is cells within organs, within organ systems, within the body. That's the holarchy of my body. All nature is embedded in that way. I as an individual am part of a holarchy with my family, my community, my ecosystem, my nation, my world. My planet is in a holarchy as a planet within a galaxy, within a galactic cluster, and so on up. So all of nature can be seen as this kind of holarchic arrangement. Now, I learned long ago that meaning is given by context. So whatever the next larger context of your holarchy is, and on and on to bigger ones up to the cosmos, that gives meaning to your life. Uh, a rose is a very different thing in the context of a love relationship, a perfume manufacturer, a donkey that's eating it or whatever, an artist that's painting it. You know, the context gives things meaning. So I can't look at anything about health without looking at several layers of context beyond that. 
The Iroquois Indians used to say, think seven generations ahead about what you're doing. I say, think about what you're doing in terms of, is this good for me, for my body, for my mental health? Is it good for my family? Is it good for my community? Is it good for my ecosystem? If you can answer that it's at least harmless and possibly valuable at all the different levels in your holarchy, I say go for it. You're a creative human being, make that decision. But you can't look at yourself out of context because you can put the most wonderful clean water, pure water and organic food into your body and live breathing toxic air. And maybe the, the air in your city is, is equivalent to smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. So you can't only take care of I, me. Uh, if we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we see that the baby can only think of me, and then it starts relating to more and more context around it. And then we get interested in serving our communities because we know what will come back to us from it. We learn the lessons of evolution, that feeding your enemy is cheaper than killing your enemy, that cooperation gives you security. And so we can cooperate to demand better air quality, better water quality, better schools, better hospitals, better everything that we need in society, because we are bright, creative people. We can do this. Our whole social world Political, economic, was all invented by people in a certain way. Now we get the data, we can see, oh, that made us unsustainable. How do we change it? We have to look at all levels of the system, every one of them, just as your body has to care about every cell that may be going wrong. And when a few cells get selfish and stop negotiating with all the other levels of holarchy in the body and just reproduce by themselves, what do we call it? Cancer, right? It's an imbalance in the system because the system knowing itself knows that every part has to be healthy. And that's how we have to think about this healthcare crisis in our country. We have to think about how do we make our bodies healthy, our families healthy, our communities healthy, our food supply healthy, the other species that we depend on healthy. You see, it's, it can't be done at one level or the other. It has to be big picture thinking and being locally active to build sustainable community.